Caroline Dowd Higgins. Thank you for listening to Your Working Life, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena. I know that you spend a significant portion of your life at work, so I'm on a mission to provide you with tools, inspiration, and resources so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And I'm so delighted to have a dear friend and a very special guest with me today. Diane Sieg is with me today. Diane, welcome to the show. Thank you, Caroline. And I want to tell my listeners, Diane, all about you, and then we're going to dive into a juicy conversation, as we always do. It's it's fun to catch up. Diane Sieg is a registered nurse, CYT, CSP, and an emergency room nurse of 23 years. She turned to be a professional speaker. She's a published author, a mindfulness coach, and a yoga teacher. She's the author of Stop Living Like an Emergency, 30 Days to Grace, a daily guide to achieve your ultimate goals. And she's also the creator of the 30-Day Mindfulness Challenge, and the online program, Your Mindful Year. Now, Diane, I love chatting with you because you have so many great things to bring to the table as a mindfulness speaker, author, and a coach. But let's go back to the beginning because some of our listeners don't know you. How did you go from the emergency room as a nurse to becoming a speaker and an author and now a mindfulness coach and yoga teacher? Well, uh, it, it is that the whole idea of going from chaos to calm, you have to kind of know, um, ha- experience it, and teach what you need to learn most. So I am definitely an adrenaline, uh, recovering adrenaline junkie. <laughs> and I, um, I saw so many people in the emergency room just uh, who ended up there by making choices or not making choices in their life and their lifestyle. And so that became really my passion to help people stop, you know, stop living life like an emergency and stop not only ending up in the emergency room literally, but the emergency room of life. And um, so it has been my path the last 18 years to uh, figure out how myself to stop living life like an emergency and how to help others. And that's that's really where the mindfulness piece really came in for me about 10 years ago which, of course, I wasn't even familiar with the term at that time. And it since has gained so much more popularity and, um, and science behind it. But this whole idea of, you know, how do we slow down? How do we stop? How do we actually n- not not just change our environment, because that isn't always possible, but how do we change ourselves and our response to the environment? And so it's, um, it's, uh, it, it was first uh, an interest, an observation, and now it's become a, a, way, a real way of living for me. And I know a life-changing and very powerful uh, movement of this whole idea of mindfulness. And you know, it really is a movement now, Diane. It is a, it's a buzzword. And you are out there doing incredible incredible work as a a speaker, an author, and a coach, and you're showing individuals and organizations how to improve their health and their happiness, and and really the bottom line through this powerful practice of mindfulness. But define it for me, right? Define it for our listeners so those who might not understand have a better definition. Sure, sure. And mindfulness, it's a simple concept. It's about being present. It's about being present to your experience, to your feelings, your thoughts, your sensations in the moment, you know, being here, right here, right now. And it's such a simple, um, it's a simple um, thing, but it's also something that none of us do because we're never here. We're multitasking. We're bombarded with all this information, all these things that we have to do. We're always in a hurry. So we're either we're, you know, we're ruminating about the past, how the call went this morning that didn't go well, or we're agonizing about the deadline that we have tomorrow, which we're afraid we're not going to make. In between time, you know, on the phone, listening to the radio, checking email, we're doing all these things and we miss the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, the present moment, so simple idea, it sounds so obvious, but it's, um, it's something that our culture does not promote. And, um, It's such a powerful practice, the idea of just being present, of just focusing right here, right now. You know, Diane, I heard something uh, today. A researcher was sharing with me that with the onset of these smartphones, right, and these mobile devices, that the average American checks their phone, right, whether it's email or text or they're online, 150 times a day. 
And that just blew my mind. And I, I confess, I'm on my phone, I use it as a great tool, and I'm checking it. But I thought, wow, 150 times a day. So that's combating mindfulness. Would you yeah. agree? Absolutely. And it's the interrupt, you know, the interrupt yeah. and they're, they're, they've done lots of studies on how long it takes us actually to, to completely focus and engage once we've been interrupted during a task, whether you're writing something or creating something or even in conversation with someone, that it's about 15 to 20 minutes for the brain to actually get back to what you were doing initially. So we are on constant interrupt and constant um, needing the stimulation of checking the phone, checking the email, checking an app, mm-hmm. checking um, uh, che- checking information. Now we can you know go on the web in seconds and find out the, the closest Thai restaurant or yep. or the best place to buy shoes. And it's um, and it's it actually uh, is is not contributing to our health, our happiness, or our, our bottom line. All this information that we are constantly being able to, to expose ourselves to clutters clutters and confuses and overwhelms us, which, you know, the whole idea of this emergency living, feeling chaotic, feeling um, overwhelmed and just kind of almost drowning, um, you know, in your life when you keep putting more and more and more in. And mindfulness is about clearing away all the external in your mind, being able to shut off the distractions and the interruptions and, uh, of everyday life and focusing on, on, on one thing, even if it's just five minutes, focusing on one thing, which is something that we are not used to doing. So, Diane, you are a mindfulness practitioner and have helped others, countless others, find their sense of, of mindfulness. What about the novice who's listening? How do we get started? And great question, because I, I, I think people have this concept that, you know, you need to go away for a weekend, a silent retreat, or you need to, you know, meditate on a rock for three hours or, or, or go to yoga. So there's there's so many different ways. And, and I really, I w- work hard at keeping this simple and easy and accessible to everyone from children, from preschool children, all the way up to seniors, because it's, it's applicable for all of us. And it's, it's so valuable. So the idea is that when we practice mindfulness and there are certain practices like meditation, like deep breathing, like visualization, like walking, like body scan, like some movement, we can really do practice mindfulness anywhere at any time because it's just focusing on your thoughts, feelings, and sensations. And so I start with people giving them a five-minute um, guided instruction to focus on their breath, to visualize a word, to, um, t- to think about different parts of their body. But it's a guided uh, practice so you don't have to actually figure it out. You know, you can actually spend five minutes mindfully eating without the television, without the computer on, without your cell phone, without doing something else, be totally conscious about what you're doing. So it can be eating, driving, walking, breathing. But this idea of focusing on one thing at a time actually changes our brain and we create new neural pathways. And when we create these new neural pathways or this new way of behaving, it it, it changes our ability to connect and to listen and and actually perform in in the long term, perform and produce. And and a huge thing that mindfulness is really now we're finding with with studies is that it decreases people's stress because we're stressed out with all this information, accessibility, and the speed of everything, the speed of things, everything keeps increasing and increasing. And so this this ability to, to slow down and to just take a deep breath and create space. And that's what I love about mindfulness the most. It helps us create this space that I think we're all craving right now. We can't make more time. We, you know, we, we can't get more energy, not from Starbucks or from the latest energizer, you know, energy drink. We need more space so that we can feel like we can respond to, to people and to situations and to our experience in, in a way that is, is intentional and that is well thought out and when we're we're feeling so pressed about everything we don't have the space the space of of the moment and that's what mindfulness um i think is is the biggest thing that mindfulness gives us just the space to to respond in in a more thoughtful and mindful way 
so beautiful to hear you talk about it with with the space, right? And I can just feel my body opening up when I hear you say that. And I want to share that because you did create this 30-day mindfulness challenge. And again, for someone like me that really appreciates a guide, someone to help me navigate my own mindfulness practice, you are someone who has helped me greatly. So tell the listeners, Diane, about the 30-day mindfulness challenge. Well, and I, I did it exactly because of that, because, at, you know, you mentioned earlier, Caroline, I have to just address this because I think it's, it's, it's just sucks, such an oxymoron. There's so many, you know, all the apps we have on our phones. And I, I, I met a cardiologist who actually is, is a friend of mine. We used to work together many years ago at the university. And I saw him recently. And he said, oh, I, I've been hearing about all this mindfulness stuff you're doing. And it's so great. And he said, let me show you the apps I got. I've got, I've got all these apps around mindfulness. I can, I can ask anytime. And he's talking, you know, uh, you know, a million miles a minute. Very obviously brilliant guy. Very, but very busy, overworked, you know, four kids. And I said, th- th- those are great. Those are great, Nelson. Um, which one do you practice? Oh, well, I haven't practiced any of them yet, but uh, great. <laughs> great <laughs> <You> know, theory. <laughs> exactly. We have access to all of this. A lot of it is free online. But the thing is, is that what I have learned through my, my own practice and through my clients is that we need we need skills. We need to understand the skills, which are quite quite easy. We need some kind of a structure and we need support yeah. <laughs> because we're busy. And mindfulness is the easiest thing to skip. It's easier to skip than your workout. It's easier to skip than breakfast because nobody knows but you. Right. And it's and, and so with this challenge, you know, wellness is, is, is of course, per, very per, um, is, is great right now. Everybody is talking about wellness programs. We know that it changes the, the bottom line of companies and the performance of employees. And so there's lots of wellness challenges out there, like, you know, how many steps can you take in a day or how many fruits and vegetables will you eat or what, what is your level of activity? And so I create a mindfulness challenge with the whole wellness um, plan in mind because I feel like mindfulness should be at the center of a wellness program, not just one of the, one of the pieces. And so in the challenge, employees or individuals are, are, are asked to commit to a minimum of five minutes a day to practice mindfulness. Anytime during the day, I I like to encourage first thing in the morning because less people are going to interrupt you um, first thing in the morning before you've hit, you know, you've hit the road. Um, but Hit the email. Be, but exactly, or checked your email, or or your voicemail, or even made your coffee. But it could be any time. It could be a mindfulness break during the day. It can be shutting your office door. It can be a transition exercise as you're going from home to work or work to home. Or you can do it right before you go to bed as kind of a, a reflection and a, a calming down and a preparing for bed because it is they are very relaxing activities. So. With five minutes of daily mindfulness practice, you actually can start creating these new neural pathways in your brain because frequency is more important than duration. I used to say 30 minutes a day, and 30 minutes, um, of course, people gave a lot of pushback because we don't have time for this. We're busy. We, you know, we, we have a lot going on. But five minutes, we can find five minutes a day, and just five minutes a day over a 30-day period something magical starts to happen. People start to recognize, first of all, how mindless we are, how mindfulness we are not when we start (laughs) practicing, focusing on the moment. Oh my gosh, my mind is going everywhere. All I can think about is what I already did yesterday or what I need to do tomorrow. I'm thinking about dinner. I'm thinking about the grocery list. I'm thinking about how tired I am. And, and it's, it's kind of a mind training, just this five minute, uh, minutes of practice. And people start to, to, to recognize how presence feels. We don't even know what that feels like when we're totally connecting with somebody and, and being present in the conversation versus uh, thinking about what we're going to say or thinking that, oh, yeah, I know that. All the things that, that the mind does because it's, you know, it's very active, 60,000 thoughts a day. And, and by the way, most of those are not true, and a lot of them are the same. We just mm. keep thinking about the same things over and over again. So this, this challenge is it's, it's an introduction. It's an exploration, and it's really an opportunity for people to actually really experience what it feels like to stop for five minutes and be present to whatever that is, even if it's being present to how 
crazy busy your mind is or how uncomfortable you are or how mad you are. But, but that presence is so powerful because then we get to decide what to do with what it. What to do, right. I love hearing you talk about it because it, the presence really is an awareness, right? So perhaps uh, your goal might be to get quiet, but but as you said, f- to really feel and live in that moment and and observe how you are, right? A- observe yeah. how you're existing. And thank you for giving us all permission, especially those of us who are novices to the mindfulness movement, to take small baby steps, right? As you said, oh. you don't have to meditate for the hours in the lotus position. Make it your own. Ab- absolutely. And there are there are so many different kinds. And in the challenge, I do offer people, that's why I offer breathing and, and movement um, and a couple of meditations, a letting go meditation, which people really love, and a loving kindness meditation about, about compassion. And it, it's, it's, you know, we all have a different way of learning. We all have different connections to different ways. There's not one way. And that's, that's the beauty and really the power of this. You can do it with your children. You, um, you yeah. can do it with your you know, with your parents or your grandparents, because it's not just, you know, it's not just for the, you know, the Buddhist monk, which is, of course, where, where mindfulness came from, but it's been, you know, westernized now. And because of the science behind it, we know that it changes the brain. So it's, it's really highly valuable for everyone, especially when you're stressed, <laughs> when you feel so overwhelmed, you don't even feel like you have space to breathe. When you feel like, you know, you don't do any, you're not doing anything. We're, we're hungry for this relief. We're hungry for, for some kind of, um, of space that we can create. And we can, you know, once you have the skill, you can do it every day on your own. It doesn't require that you have any special tools or you even have someone to go. Yeah. Yeah. So, Diane, you are a certified speaking professional. You've earned the CSP designation. And as a fellow speaker on the circuit, I can tell you that is such an extraordinary distinction. Bravo to you. What's coming up these days? Where can we hear you speak or how can we follow you online and connect with you? Tell us how to follow you. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. I Well, I have a couple of programs now. Of course, dianeseek.com um, is my website, uh, D-I-N-E-S-I-E-G.com. That is where I have a lot of my um, speaking and retreats and uh, the 30-day mindfulness challenges outlined there. I also have an online program now called Your Mindful Year, and that's yourmindfulyear.com, where is a, it's a 12-month program, and it basically is 12 30 day challenges because people, um, once they go through, do the 30 day challenge, they wanted to know what was next. And again, we need not only the skills, but we need structure and support to practice. And I can tell you, you know, just from my own experience, when you're doing it by yourself and you don't have someone to be accountable to, it's just, it's very easy to skip. So your mindful year is an online program that gives you the guided instructions, um, different ideas for practicing, and a monthly intention. So every month we have a different intention, and we're just wrapping up um, this month with courage, where you focus on your relationships, your work, your health, and your finances all around courage. And it's fascinating because these intentions give us an anchor. They give us an anchor of, of a place to start, and then we can look at our at our lives in very different ways. So all the practices for the, for this month have been, whether it's deep breathing or visualization or meditation or even movement, it's about thinking about, it's about focusing on courage. And we know what we focus on expands. So when you start looking at courage in different areas of your life, very interesting things show up. You start to notice um, how I can practice courage in a relationship or in my life by speaking my truth or speaking up or being honest about what maybe do- works for me and what doesn't work for me. So it's it's very empowering. It's, it's an empowering, powerful practice on any level. And there are just so many opportunities out there right now for all of us to get involved, engaged in, in some way. And as you said earlier, it, you know, starting small is how we all have to start. And then it's it's the frequency. It's not how long, it's not how much, it's really how often. <laughs> Beautifully put. And, and I just want to repeat what you said because it was so lovely. What we focus on expands. So what a great way to end our conversation. And we can focus on whatever is important to each of us as we're listening right now. And Diane Sieg, always a joy to have you on the show. And and our paths are going to cross in person later this spring. I'm so excited. You're keynoting a conference that I'm also speaking at. So I look forward to seeing you then. 
Thank you so much, Caroline. My pleasure, always. I appreciate you and all the work that you're doing, and I'm, I'm just happy to be able to um, bring mindfulness to, to more people. The world needs more. Very true. Thank you, my dear. Be well. And I want to remind everybody that I'm so delighted that you tuned into your working life today, where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. True career and life satisfaction is possible, and it's time to embrace what you love doing so you can do more of it. And as Diane says, what we focus on expands. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care.